This is Huo Commander Review. Huo is the newest field commander in Rise of Kingdoms, and being released to the wheel is really a godsend for him, because he's going to be so useful to so many players as an alternative to Nevsky, and on his own as a very viable field commander. In this video, we're going to be going over his skills, his talents, what you should expect to build for his equipment and armaments, as well as some pairings and other information. But without further ado, let's get started. First, we're going to cover Huo's skills. Huo's primary skill is a 2700 damage factor single target that gives a 50% march speed reduction. Note that it's severely less when you have him as a secondary commander, so you want to have him as a primary in every case, which isn't a problem because he has access to the skill tree, so there's really no reason not to use him as a primary in the field. His second skill is a 40% increased attack, which is very solid, very good actually and 15% increased march speed and 5% damage to archers. I'm not as huge on the 5% damage to archers, but the 15% move speed is super useful and I highly recommend it because it puts him in a tier with William, Joan Prime, Sao Sao as having some of the higher move speeds. So it's super useful. His third skill basically requires him to be outside of a building for at least 30 seconds. So this won't work if you were hiding inside of a city and ambushing people. This will not work if you are garrisoning a structure. This will not work shortly after you leave a city, in most cases, because you have to be outside of it for at least 30 seconds. But once you are, for the first 15 seconds of combat, you get 30% skill damage, and your skill only costs 850 rage, which you can actually get all the way down to 750 if you combine them with uh, Khan. But overall, the idea is more damage and more skills in the first 15 seconds. Afterwards, it'll be 10% uh, more normal attack damage. So, it basically will swap out. So this makes him less useful for rallies, because obviously rallies last a lot longer than 15 seconds. So then it just becomes 10% more normal attack damage, which is great to resist Torn for rallies, but it's still not nearly as good as 30% skill damage, and makes him inferior to Nevsky in that regard. But this is going to make him insanely useful in field fights like Ruins and Altars, where you are far away from your territory and you are just trying to control an area, or if you're trying to disrupt enemy reinforcements. So he's going to be great offensively, not so great defensively. His four skill is, of course, 30% increased defense and 20% more skill damage when you're attacking an enemy troop. This means, again, defensively it's not going to take effect. Uh, in addition, when you defeat an enemy, you get a 1500 healing factor, uh, but we're going to skip to the expertise because it buffs this even more. Once you get an expertise, it becomes 35% defense, 25% skill damage, and a 3000 healing factor, which is super insane. Overall, though, if you really needed to get away with it, you could probably get away with using him 5551 and above in the field. But I highly recommend you get the expertise because this 1500 factor that becomes a 3000 factor and then an additional 20% skill damage with the expertise is well worth it. Even if it's got an 8 second cooldown, it really does not is not as significant as you think it is in terms of the cooldown. Because you're going to be fighting troops all the time and if you manage to drop one, that's a healing factor. It keeps you sustained. It helps reduce the strain on your hospitals. Next, we're going to be talking about talents, and with Cavalry Versatility skill, the most applicable commander to him is Khan. So you're going to use very similar skills to him in this regard. Of course, you want maxed out Feral Nature, and you want a Blast and Shield. I prefer going on Dying Fury for the extra rage, but if you'd prefer to have mobility, you could pull Halberd here and just sacrifice the additional damage to Archers for chance to increase March speed if you want a more mobile March. But I still recommend you stay with Halberd because it's just very useful and it leans into his 5% damage to Archer's ability. But overall, you definitely want to get the max out skill uh, skill tree. You want to get in Blast and Shield and then as much rage as you can get because more skill casts is more damage. And then you can make extra utilization out of that bonus damage in the first 15 seconds of a fight. For formations, same thing. You're going to want to be working with Wedge Formation for Huo because Wedge Formation just gives so much damage that 
this 2700 factor gets 5% bonus damage. Plus, your Joan Prime or your Nevsky or all these other cavalry commanders that have high skill damage are going to get bonus from it as well. So, overall, it is just completely beneficial to go with full skill tree and then, of course, go into wedge formation because of the bonuses. For equipment, you're going to want to focus on as many defensive stats as possible. So, you want to stack as much health, as much defense, and as much of that as you can. And, of course, that is mostly through the Wasteland set. And the set in question here, this is about what I run for my cavalry, and it's perfect for Huo because it helps increase the survivability. Ring is awesome. Horn is awesome for the same reasons. You want more rage. You want more skill damage. So those are easily the best pieces for him to use. And the health and defense just increases survivability because he already has enough damage on his skills and from his skill damage passives that... Really, you don't need to build into a lot of attack and attack to get damage high. You already have high damage, so keeping him alive is going to help sustain him alongside that heal. Lastly, let's go over pairings. So, since Huo is going to be a field commander, you're going to want to pair him with other field commanders. Your biggest philosophy is going to be one of two things. You're either going to want to go for the maximum 1v1 damage and try to deal as much damage to single targets as you can, or, conversely, you want to go for AoE damage or support to help your allies. So, first for 1v1 damage is Nevsky. Between the skill damage they provide to each other and overall the regular damage and health boosts, it keeps them survivable, helps them do a lot of damage to single targets. However, it doesn't do a lot of AoE support for allies. It does do a defense reduction debuff. But that is basically just a side piece to that. So overall, your biggest thing is going to be, in this case, for 1v1s like duels. However, in the field, most practical situations, what I'm going to recommend most highly is Joan Prime. Because the 2700 damage factor, whoa skill, plus 30% damage bonus on his skill in the first 15 seconds of combat, plus the additional 25% on his force skill, on top of a 2,000 damage factor that recasts is going to put out an insane amount of damage. On top of the fact that the skill tree is going to give more skill casts and more damage. And the fact that with it itself, she also gains 5% damage and 20 rage per second for allies. Which is going to be useful for getting more skills off. Especially since the primary skill is only going to cost 850 rage for the first 15 seconds. So overall, these are going to be great pairings. And the personal pairing I'm going to be shooting for is for Joan Prime. So it would be Huo Joan Prime. But also, if you don't have Joan Prime, you can also use the likes of William. Because his AoE defense buff and rage buff is going to help him get more skills off as well. And more skills with Huo's primary, even though it's only single target, is going to be better for your damage and better for your survivability. Because you're going to be defeating enemies quicker. If you don't have any of these commanders and you're working, you're just hitting Season of Conquest and you do have Khan that's an option. Or if you have Saladin, that is also a solid option as well because this 30% reduced skill damage and 20% reduced counterattack damage taken helps keep them alive a lot better. But with that, we've completed our discussion on Huo. I really think he's gonna be great. I don't think he's gonna break the game, but he is definitely going to be well worth using if you are a field player and you are looking to get the most out of your abilities. Because his sustain for things like Ruins and Altars where you have a 3-4 minute march back is going to be so invaluable to you with that 3000 healing factor and the sheer amount of damage he's going to put out. But what do you think? Who do you plan on pairing him with? Let me know in the comments. What commander should I cover next? You can also let me know down there as well. And as always, good luck, fight well, and I will see you on the battlefield.